Prophet Sharma is a recognized public speaker, life invoker, and soul winner with a heavy apostolic and prophetic mantle. His influence spreads across the religious and secular arena. As you watch, let your life be catapulted into a higher dimension of wisdom and favor. Let us know where you're watching us from. Kindly share the broadcast comment or tag a friend and don't forget to follow and subscribe to our facebook youtube and instagram pages simply search for shama shenyaka god bless you family welcome to another episode of rema for living with your friend your brother prophet chama i believe that today the lord is going to bless you as we are bringing a new episode and as we are talking about ministry and pastors are you a pastor you're a minister or do you desire to be in ministry? I believe that this sermon is for you and you're going to be blessed in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. You see, the Bible says, I will give you ministers after my own heart. And our theme scripture is Jeremiah chapter number 31, verse number 15, and First Kings chapter number 13, from verse number 11 to 15. Those are our key scriptures. The Bible says that I will give you shepherds after my own heart you see ministry is easy when you let God and the Holy Spirit lead you see ministry is easy when you have understanding on the things that God has called you and you stick to your calling ministry becomes sweet when you avoid certain mistakes and errors and you watch from the pitfalls of others that have gone ahead of you and I believe that by doing so God will begin to bless you God will begin to enlarge your ministry. It's one thing to to be a minister. It's another thing to be an impactful minister. And God wants us to be impactful. Life changes. God wants us to be life changes. So for you to be a life changing minister, there are certain mistakes that you need to avoid. And today I want to talk about 30 mistakes that ministers, pastors, prophets, bishop are uh, archbishops, teachers, apostles make in ministry. And I believe that some mistakes can be avoided, some mistakes can be overlooked, some mistakes can be overwritten, but there are some mistakes that are costly that cannot be undone. So that's why I'm coming to you, so we can teach each other in the word of God and in love. I believe there's more mistakes, but I'm just going to share the ones that God has given me. And I'm sharing them based on revelation, experience and observation i've seen pastors rising and falling i've seen pastors doing well and they, they were on the scene for some time and then all of us all of a sudden you don't even know where they are so i'm sharing with you based on what i've seen and what god has showed me what i've prayed and god said avoid these mistakes and i believe that it's going to be a blessing to you so you need to understand mistakes are part of life, they are common, and I have said some mistakes are due to inexperience, some mistakes are due to pride, some mistakes are due to stubbornness, some mistakes are due to negative influences, some mistakes are, are due to satanic attacks, some mistakes can be corrected, others can be impossible to correct, some can be reversed, some cannot be reversed, some can be overlooked, some cannot be overlooked. Some can change your destiny forever. And I believe that ministry is, is a marathon. You can start well and end badly. So I believe that as we discuss these mistakes, it will help you not to start well but to finish well as well. So the first mistake that ministers make in ministry, number one, is having an independent spirit or rebellion. You see, when God raises you, you cannot give birth to yourself as a child of God. You are given birth by someone, maybe your pastor, your spiritual father, or your mentor. And then all of a sudden, because you, are, you have the gift to minister or to prophesy or to pray for people and they are falling or signs and wonders or any other nine gifts of the Holy Spirit, they are moving through you, working in you. You have an anointing within and, and people can see it, the grace of God. And all of a sudden, you, you break your pastor's church and you start your own because you have a gift. That's wrong. That's why most churches that break away and start their own, they don't last long. Why? Because they don't have a blessing from their pastor, neither the blessing from God. That's very, very important. 
so you don't have an independent spirit that you can't be corrected you can't be told what to do because you have a gift and you prophesy that's wrong you can't listen to uh, the board of elders and uh, or, or people that are leaders above you when they're speaking you, you because they cannot see because you have the ability to see or to do any other signs and wonders and you become rebellious remember the devil was casted out of heaven not because he drank or smoked or stole someone's wife it's because of rebellious the Bible says God resists the pride and he gives grace to the humble which leads me to my point number two which is pride is another mistake that ministers make in ministry don't let pride take the grace of God away from you James chapter number four verse number ten humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and you will lift you up so pride is a one of the things that ministers when God God has blessed you God has raised you you came from the rural areas you came from nowhere now you have private jets you are calling people when you are prophesying people that are older than you older than your mother to say hey you come here if you don't come I'm gonna skip you no the person is older than you is even sick struggling to walk and he's saying man of God help me and then you, you ignore that person that's wrong don't let pride get go get hold of you so was proudful and God took the anointing away from him and gave it to David just know that the fact that you're playing position number one God still has number two that's why when Elijah said Lord I'm the only prophet left God said I corner there's 6,000 more besides you that I can still use and put in your place so that's very very important don't let pride go ahead of you and the Bible says pride goes ahead before fall in Proverbs and number three backstabbing other pastors and disloyalty it goes together backstabbing you find out pastors they backstab each other I'm telling you it's so sad if I tell you stories that I know about pastors backstabbing each other they go and backbite each other to take each other's members that's wrong it's a mistake remember you reap what you sow so you don't want to sow that into your ministry so that you can reap it 10 years when you have just imagine you have a, a big building a massive building like this one an auditorium like where we are and all of a sudden after 20 years it's turned into a factor don't sow confusion because you reap more than that or, or being disloyal the pastor calls you you must be at church I want you to do this this for me and say no I'm preaching somewhere I got an invitation no man no it doesn't work like that grow where God has planted you maybe you are the founder yourself you are coming from somewhere make sure you maintain good relationship and association from where you are coming from and then number four mistake ministers make in ministry is the love of money a lot of a lot of people are after profit and they end up cutting corners because of love of money you end up uh, 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 pretending that you've raised someone from the dead you end up uh, prophet you end up match making miracles and, and, and saying you have the ability to do this to walk fly in the air and all these things just to keep the crowd it does not work like that it does not work like that don't let money be the center or the core of why God has called you into ministry that's very very important because when the love of money begin to lead you I'm telling you your fall is very nine because yes we need money to do ministry remember I'm not against money I'm against the love of money because when the love of money fills your heart you begin to do anything else for money that's why pastors end up going to Sangomas and Juju priests for powers because they want money to keep flowing Yet the blessing of the Lord that maketh one rich and adds no sorrow, it comes from God. The Bible says, where does promotion come from? I shall look unto the east and to the west. Where does promotion come from? But promotion comes from the Lord. It comes from above. That's very, very important. The love of money. Never cut corners. Never cut corners to be a successful minister or you want to be a celebrity minister. No, there's nothing like that. Remember, we have a crown waiting for us in heaven that's what is important you need to be accountable number five opening doors for immorality and adultery a lot of pastors they open doors for immorality and adultery you are a man of god in your protocol you have 20 sisters all your ushers are only women people every, everything you're just surrounded by you're opening doors for immorality even if you you say ah you're a man of god you're a prophet you can't be tempted it's a lie no man of god is above temptation 
even Jesus himself was tempted by the devil after 40 days in prayer and fasting just imagine you are son of God and the devil tempted him what more you just a man of God so that's very important don't open doors for immorality that's why you need to practice proximity between you and your wife openness no not keeping secrets and stuff like that because these are the things that has killed a lot of ministers that were uh, above us that has gone ahead of us a lot of great ministers they fell because of this issue not keeping up their zip if you have a zip problem you need to seek uh, advice and prayer guidance you can be delivered from other higher ministers so that they can pray for you so that you can come out of it otherwise it can destroy the gift that God has given you you see if a, an ungodly person Ricky Rose impregnate someone his career might not even go down he can it can double but if you're a man of God you make that mistake no one is gonna believe in your grace again so there are certain things mistakes that you should not even indulge in at all very very important so don't open doors for immorality by surrounding yourself with women you are chatting with women at night and all these are men of God you are busy canceling women there's no any other person there no it doesn't work like that you're opening doors for you to be tempted it might be even vice versa okay you are a woman of God and you're doing exactly the same don't tempt yourself that's very very important okay and then number six spiritual laziness a lot of pastors they don't pray they don't fast they just come stand and preach prepare a short sermon on Saturday two minutes two minutes that's why there's no revival in your church that's why there's no growth that's why there's no hunger and thirst because the person that is releasing you are, you are you are imparting what is in you and what is in you is emptiness that's why the people that you are raising they are empty word empty and very shallow that's why there's a lot of sin in the church and immorality because you yourself the set man you are not fire you are not on fire because if you're on fire for God the same fire that is in you will be ignited to the members the Bible says the oil flows from the head of the Aaron unto the what so you understand the oil comes from from the top if the head is confused what about the body that's very very important are we together and then number seven inadequate training D despite your gift of healing the sick the miraculous go to Bible school enroll for Bible school so that you can be trained a lot of pastors they are gifted anointed but they ended up going into perversions the anointing began to be perverted because they were not trained because God has given you a gift and an anointing instead of going to heal the sick in the hospitals you you make people eat grass you make people eat hair you make people all these things which means the anointing is there but where the anointing is being placed the purpose of the anointing is misdirected so which means there's a lack of knowledge which you can obtain by just going to Bible school and be learned so that you can have an understanding about ex expository preaching and and uh, humanetics and Christology and all these things that you need to to know as a minister that's very very important a lot of pastors they've got gift but no character because they were not trained just imagine if you go to the doctor and the doctor only tells you that you know what I only have a gift you know I wake up in the morning and I, I can inject you do you think you're gonna let that job doctor inject you or even if it's a pilot he does you know I don't have training but uh, I know how these things work by revelation do you think you're gonna uh, board that aeroplane so where are you taking your members without you being trained I'm not saying that's what makes ministry I'm not saying that what makes you to be called no but you need to be trained you can't reign unless if you are trained that's very very important inadequate training it's mistake seven that mr ministers make in in, in in ministry number eight public praise when people begin to praise you papa yeah my papa it's no longer about jesus christ it's no longer about god now it's about you we serve a jealous god the moment you replace yourself with god be very careful because the same god can judge you a lot of ministers they fall not because they wanted to fall but the praises of people people begin to worship you kneel down touching your shoes all these things are not biblical you never see any these things anywhere in the Bible that's human worship and you're letting people worship you up instead of you directing people because the purpose of a shepherd a man of God 
is for you to direct people to Christ, to Father, to connect people to God Himself, not to connect people to yourself. You don't you do not draw people to yourself, you draw people to God. I don't know if I'm talking to somebody here. And then number nine mistake ministers make in ministry is having the spirit of big manism or titlement. They love titles or oh, in position. You do not call me bishop. You do not call me prophet. You do not call me major. You do not call me a master. Master prophet. All these things are the, I mean, hey, God have mercy. Big manism. It's not the title that makes you. It's you who make the title. That thing is very common, especially in Africa. Oh my God. I even saw a poster that was written. Apostle, prophet, teacher, evangelist, archbishop, and chief what what i mean I like chieftainship has even entered this thing very soon we're gonna have a christian pop <laughs> very soon someone will be titling himself pop i'm telling you because there's now general the world greatest what ah, come on it's a mistake because it can cause you to fall and lose focus then number 10 character disorder a lot of pastors and ministers they exaggerate and they lie if you ask any pastor how many members do, do you have no we are 5,000 but when you go there there's 50 people character disorder when you say to someone I'll pay you if you do this do this uh, I'm gonna pay you pastors you find that pastors struggle to pay a lot of people that is worked with men of God they are always complaining they were robbed off People are hurt, musicians are hurt, and whatever, a lot of people are hurt because the pastor could not keep up to his word. He told the person, so for me, I will, I will, I will, I will pay you after you are done with my attire. The person is finished, now the man of God is nowhere to be found. And you are busy snapping photos on Facebook, posing with clothes that you did not even finish paying. And that person, I know a person, a, a, a woman of God, the, another the, the, the tailor ended up putting it on Facebook to say this person is not a woman of God at all. He's lying to you when he's saying shout amen and shout I receive. You see, that's character disorder. You need to pray and say God prune me, shape my character, mold me as a man of God. Number 11, self-promotion and showing off. It's not you who does the work, it's Jesus Christ who does the work. So why are you self-promoting yourself? It's all about you and your wife and there's no Jesus, there's no Bible, whatever. That's a mistake. And number 12, in a haste to start. A lot of pastors, you can go to a calling today, but does not mean that you should start a ministry today. Jesus was called at 12 and he only started ministry at 13. Actually, Jesus was called from birth. We see how the wise men came and confirmed that he was an anointed one of God, Christ, the Messiah. But yet, Jesus only started to be effective in ministry for only when he was 30 years. And he only was in ministry for three years. And his three years ministry, we see the results until today. People are praying in his name. For three years only, he was not even in ministry for 50 years. Just three years, he changed his world. Don't be in a haste to start. David was anointed at 16 and he became king at 40. So there's an anointment time and appointment time. It might, you might be anointed, but you are you appointed. Think about it. Don't be in a haste to start. Make sure you have the leading of the Holy Spirit. That's very, very important. Number 13, becoming full time too soon. You have 20 members. Your chairs are empty. You just started ministry now and you're telling you and Sophie and your wife saying you're no longer going to work, you're going to eat from the offerings. No, members are going to run away from you because you're going to become a burden. Men of God, find something to do. Go and work. Be a plumber. Be a builder. There's no shame in feeding your family. Never be ashamed to work to feed your family. Whether people are, listen, if you don't do anything, people will talk. If you do something, people will still talk. So forget about what people would say if they see me selling tomatoes. I'd rather sell tomatoes than to beg from members because people will begin to question your calling and say ah if you serve god of who can do everything who's able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that you can ask how come the same god that you're serving can't give you shoes he can't give you tomatoes and food to eat that's wrong so make sure don't be full time because there's a difference between being full time and foolish time Remember, you are a full-time Christian 24 7 so you can still work and pray in tanks. Don't say you are praying every time Okay, and then number Number 14 Making ministry a personal empire. I've gone to churches where 
everything is just centered upon the family. The mother is the secretary, the child is the treasurer, the son is the uh, president worship leader, and there's no people, other people, the cousins and what are the ones running the church, and there's no other external people. Listen, that's why you find out that some ministries, when the founder dies, that ministry cannot continue. Never make ministry a personal empire. God makes you a steward, right? He calls you and makes you a steward. It doesn't mean it's yours. A ministry belongs to God. People belong to Him. And Him alone, you are just a steward, a custodian of people that God has given you. And the people are not yours. The ministry is also not yours. So you can't make ministry a personal empire. That's why most ministries, they don't like. Do you think if people like John Gillek who started AFM, he made, him, he made it a, a, a family thing, do you think there'll be AFM today? Just imagine of John Wesley who started Methodist Church in England. Do you think if he made it about him and his brother, Charles Wesley, just about them and their family, do you think Methodists will be all over the world? No. Don't make ministry a personal empire. That's very, very important. It's a mistake a lot of ministers make. Number 15, poor money attitude. You find that a lot of pastors, they, they don't know how to invest. They've got more shoes. If they wear a red suit, they want a red shoe. If they wear a green suit, they want a green shoe. Some poor money attitude instead of investing. If you sell some suits you have, you can buy a church, church music instruments. If you sell some... some <laughs> the car that you are driving you can buy a building for your church why are you renting from muslims isn't it a shame as a man of god you see a lot of pastors bragging on facebook about the cars and houses they live in but when you go to their churches they are renting what a shame that's poor money attitude no investment for your family nothing but you are bragging about a fake louis vuitton and prada that is bought by the china shop that's very, very important. Number 16, it's a mistake. Number 16, poor self-development. Poor self-development. A lot of pastors, they don't read books. That's why they are limited in revelation. You find out that uh, a lot of members, they leave, not because they leave, because the church is bad, but they feel like the pastor is very shallow, man. There's no, there's no growth in them, so they'll end up leaving. Remember, you need to understand that as a man of God in this day and age, you can't be computer illiterate. You need to have an education that you need to obtain. Besides Bible, what else do you know? People always want to know, besides Bible, what else do you know? Besides Bible, besides John 3.16, what else do you know? So develop yourself. Be broad. As future father, Apostle Ronnie taught me this. Be broad. He reads a lot. He knows a lot. Be broad. Know what is going on around you. Don't be shallow so that when you preach, people can be able to relate. We are living in an era of technology. So you can't be so backward and people can't relate with you and then you expect your church to grow. It's a mistake. And then number 17, lack of pulpit utterance. They call it pulpit language, lack of pulpit language. A lot of pastors, they don't use wisdom when they're on pulpit. You find out they'll begin to use pulpit to curse members. They'll begin to use pulpit to preach against other pastors. Pulpit is never meant to preach for you to settle quarrel. Pulpit is for you to release life and speak the word of God to people. Not for you to settle some issues of a member who's owing you or whatever. Then you, you begin to preach like that. Some of you here, I know you are here, some of you. Some of you here, no, don't do that. That's being immature. Or you have an issue at your house, then you begin to say, young people, you must look well before you marry. What kind of bad utterance is that? They don't even make sense. You need to have wisdom on the pulpit. If you are bitter, step aside. Let someone else minister until your heart is restored. Don't carry bitterness on the pulpit because it will flow into the congregation, just like immorality. Number 18, being stingy. A lot of pastors have got a receiving mentality. They ask everyone to pay tithe, but then themselves they don't pay tithe. They even do the tithe talk. That's wrong, being stingy. Don't have be stingy as a minister. 
you want to live under open heavens, there are two things that you can do. Your prayers and your giving. Cornelius, the prayers and your giving is risen as a, mem as a memorial before the Lord. Acts chapter number 10. God does not only answer prayer, God also answers giving as a form of prayer. So as a minister, if you want to experience open heaven and overflow finance in your ministry, you also need to sow into people's lives, into the members you have, into other ministries as well. Remember, you sow up and you sow down. That's very important. Um, up is the ministry that you look up to people that you emulate so into them so you can receive the same grace and you sow down to the people that looks up to you if you have a member that is struggling and god has blessed you why are you not helping the members that's why they criticize pastors because sometimes we live a la lavish style life and people that are in our church even your assistant pastor is looking sick and skinny battered tattered ragged and scattered but the senior pastor is looking good. That's wrong. How can they not suspect you of eating church money? Number 19. Lack of administration. Whew, this one is a major problem. When you go to many churches, there's no administration. How do you receive people? What about the Sunday school? Parking. All these things, small things. Maintenance. Which buys the electricity, which changes the bulbs. There has to be an administration team. You can't run everything as a man of God. That's why they said, let's find ourselves men who are full of the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter number 7. Acts chapter number 6. Let's find men who are full of the Holy Spirit. So that we don't have to leave uh, our prayers and, and the word to serve tables. So the, the serving of the tables, it talks about a day-to-day -day administration, the day-to-day -day running of your ministry. I mean, in this day and age, when you are having a ministry and your ministry is not on Facebook, you are not doing live streaming and all these things, mm -mm. there has to be administration. That's very important. How does your money, money flow in your church? Where does it go? All these things. How do people get feedback of what is happening in the house of God? All that is administration. How are leaders appointed? All that is administration. It's very, very important. Because... People, when they go to malls and what they stand at, when they come to church, the church is dirty, the toilets are dirty, the chairs are dirty, everywhere is stinking and smelling. When they go to your houses, they are going to houses that are smelling good, cars with air condition and air freshener. How can we attract people with such a mentality? That's wrong. We need to have administration in place. That's very important. Number 20, doing business with church members. That's very dangerous. As a man of God, you are a man of God, not a businessman, number one. You can be a businessman and a man of God at the same time, but understand that what comes first is your calling as a man of God. Avoid to do business with church members because you're going to end up hurting each other. Because now if you delay to pay and you are their pastor, I know a pastor who got shot by his church members because he did not pay when they did deal. That's very dangerous. Don't involve yourself in pyramid schemes and all these things. It kills the church. One pastor approached me and said, don't you want to do this? Uh, if you recruit 20 people and what, 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 you get, what, what, what. I knew that his ministry is never going to grow. Because he recruited members when the things did not work. He benefited. His members did not benefit. They begin to say, pastor, where's our money? They ended up even taking church keyboard and church cameras and going to his house and take the TV. Just imagine, you same people you are preaching to. Okay, number, number 21. Ordaining people quickly. Please, the fact that the person comes is new and is serving and what, don't quickly ordain them without checking their spirit. You need to see the fruits. Very, very important. That's why the Bible says, men which are full of the Spirit, Acts chapter number 6, are they filled with the Holy Spirit? Don't be too quick to ordain people. They just come, because those people, they haven't been trained. They haven't singed into your sermon and your messages. You ordain them. They'll begin to fight your ministry. They'll, be, they'll, they'll become the, the, the absolute and, 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 and the gases of your ministry and begin to pull you down. Why? Because they've never had time to soak into your ministry, trained under your anointing. So you, you empower them actually to fight you. Don't empower people to fight you by ordaining them. Very important. The title pastor is not a title. It's a calling by seeing the fruits. To those people you are ordaining as pastors, do they have even a heart 
to love people because you can't pass that unless if you love people or sometimes you need to wake up too and pray for the people people will call you and say come leave everything so make sure number 22 relationship disorder there's a lot of pastors you invite them to come preach they'll mess up while they're preaching they're taking people's phone numbers making girlfriends collecting money and all these things God has given a platform to preach so that your message can be amplified and you're using the same platform to create disorder to be honest with you there's no pulpit that I've ever climbed and I do not go back to climb it again there's no platform that I've preached and I do not because I always maintain good associations and relationships I do not pee in the water that I drink a lot of pastors they go and mess up you just invite them once they go and mess up they'll begin to do things that you did not agree make sure when you go minister or you invite a minister make sure you are clear with that person in terms of terms and conditions of the during the administration and the processes that you need to be con be clear on those things we call it pastoral ethics let it be clear very very important so that you don't fight and maintain good relationship and association with pastor even when you leave a church make sure you still maintain that relation because you still need that pastor but if your ministry that you're starting falls back and it doesn't work where are you going to attend church but if you have messed up you can't go back when you have problem when you have a funeral to say please uh the church where i'm coming from can you come and assist me my mother died or you can't go back because you've messed up okay number 23 slaves to money bags they are pastors when they see a rich member oh my god they become slaves they can't even correct them or preach against what those rich people are doing in the church they are busy sleeping around they're having two hours and all and you can't correct them because you're afraid that if i correct him i'm losing tithe are you called to collect tithe or are you called to minister the truth okay don't be a slave to rich money bags number 24 position conscious the pastors who are position conscious they did not greet me as the pastor. no we are not here to greet you we are here to meet jesus christ so if you go to a church and they do not greet you, maybe they do not see you or whatever, please do not take offense because people are there to be set free by the word of God. So now, why should we recognize you when we are supposed to recognize the Holy Spirit? We are not saying that pastors should not be honored. No. But don't have that mentality of position consciousness. Usually people that are position consciousness, they have a different spirit than the spirit of God. Number 25 getting credit or debt to do ministry that's very dangerous never do that i've seen churches that is closed they repossessed by banks they want to borrow money loan sharks and then the loan sharks come sunday and begin to take things deco <laughs> and begin to take all those things no pray for god trust god have faith for God to open doors for you and give you the money to buy the things that you need to that will make your ministry easy don't do ministry debt if you are not at that level of having um, screens line arrays and JBLs and all these expensive things equipment and cameras be be at your level be satisfied of where you are and just pray for for greater grace for God to get you at that level but don't go around borrowing being in credit I know a pastor every month he pays a, a lot of money that is going to debt and he's suffocating he told me I wish I was not a pastor I just don't know how to come out of it you see now he's doing ministry under frustration what is supposed to be a blessing to him and his family what is supposed to be a blessing to me has become a curse now so don't do that number 26 having more liabilities than assets a lot of pastors they invest liabilities shoes are liabilities cars are liabilities but property is an asset you need to be wise there's a pastor that i know a very great pastor wisdom anointed for 35 years he was pastoring only to find out when he was done pastoring he did not have a house he had to go and stay in a zozo a mukuku someone's house after 35 years of changing lives what was he doing with all the money that he was getting he was buying cars shoes and what forgetting to have a place to stay having more liabilities than assets you need to be wise you need to be wise we call it actually ostentatious living also 
where you live above your income is a man of God. You want to see now people must know that I'm staying in town, I'm staying in a duplex. No, be satisfied at the level where you are. Don't compete. That's very, very important. And number 27, not building. A lot of pastors, they don't build. Especially black pastors, we don't build. We don't build. We don't even have vision to build. Why? I don't even know why. Because building will make your ministry to last longer. People like things that are permanent. That's why they like insurances that are longer and older. Like old mucho, 100 years old. People like something that has been tested and tried. Very important. Have a building. Pray for a building. Build. Into building. Invest money into building. That's very, very important. It shows that you want your ministry to be permanent. You are not. You are serious. You are not joking. There are cars who are drive, pastors who are driving X5s and driving uh, expensive cars, but they don't have building. That's witchcraft, for, according to me. Because you are driving your own building. Sell that car that you and your wife are driving and build to show people that you're serious about ministry and you're not just there to gain and collect tithes and offerings. Number 28, low maintenance culture. Low maintenance culture. If there are cables in your church, make sure the cables are properly treated and people that don't step on the cables, present worship, they don't just drop the mics because those things are expensive. One day a, a guy broke the drums while he was preaching in it. He broke it, it boom, then he broke the drum. Then I said, under the same anointing you have broken, is the same anointing you must buy. Because those things are expensive. You are playing recklessly because you did not buy the sticks. You are playing recklessly because you did not buy the keyboard. That's why you are treating it like that. If you spend 15,000 on the keyboard, 40,000 on the motif, you will treat it properly if it was yours. So people have a, a, a low, uh, low maintenance culture when it comes to the things of God. They just treat it anyhow. And then we keep on buying the same things over and over. Last year, the project of sound. This year, again, you have, ah, until Jesus comes back, we are still buying sound. Instead of putting that money into building and into other places that we can help the poor orphanages and all these things that we can do, or even evangelism, which is very important. Okay, number 28. Make sure that your house is not a hospital. You find out there's a lot of pastors who stay with church members and they're doing nothing, they're just roaming around. The same people will begin to carry rumors and speak against you and stuff like that. No. Your house is not a is not a church. Your house is not a church. There has to be strict lines. That's why a lot of pastors' wives are not respected. Because members they just come into the bedroom, lay down, open the fridge and what they don't even respect your wife in church. Because it's even at home they see it. So do not do that. Your house is not a hospital. And lastly, number 30, balance your home. Your family comes first before your ministry. As a man or a woman of God, never sacrifice ministry above your family. Listen, I believe, I believe that in the eyes of God, you have only failed when you have failed to pastor your wife and your children or your husband and your children. Because your first duty as a husband or a wife is your family before God. Those are things that you should succeed to pastor. Make sure that your kids they don't go wayward into drugs, alcohol, and all this lesbianism and all these things as pastor's children. A lot of pastor's children are gangsters, Rastafarians. It's sad because the parents were there, were not there for them, but they were there for other people's children, praying for them or dedicating them, baptizing them, but your own children you neglect them. Never sacrifice ministry above your children. I love my pastor. My pastor, if his child is going for sport, he will not be there Sunday. He will not. He will be there at the sporting game of his child, because you don't want your child to grow up with bitterness. That my father was never there; he was just busy doing church. And there was a great man of God who started a great denomination. I will not mention his name. Started a great denomination. He, his wife died. He could not come because he was preaching. Today, his children they do not serve God. They say that. If God can take you away from our mother, you were never there for us. We grew up ourselves alone, then we cannot serve that God. We need a God who can make sure that our father is at home. So don't let your children have resentment towards you because you are a minister. Same as your wife or your husband. You can't put them above ministry. You just say, no, you know, the world just started. I need to deliver people. No, you're not a taxi driver. 
Yes, I understand the burden of ministry lays upon you, but you cannot sacrifice your marriage above your ministry. Because the same people they are sacrificing for, when you do a mistake, let's say you cheat your, you cheat your wife or you're caught in fornication or something, you did something wrong. The same people that you are running after, those are the same people who will be speaking against you as the minister. And the same wife, they are not taking care of. The same children, you are not raising properly. They are the people who will be there for you. Be wise as a minister. So these are the 30 mistakes ministers make in ministry. There's more, but these are the ones that God uh, has allowed me to speak to you for now. I believe this has been a blessing to you. And I believe that as a minister, go and sit down and begin to change find ways on how you can adjust to have a better ministry ministry is easy when mistakes are avoided ministry is easy when mistakes are avoided. i believe this sermon was a blessing to you and i believe that your life will never be the same i pray for you in the name of jesus that the lord will transform your ministry you'll be a life impact for minister in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that God will amplify your message and your ministry in the name of Jesus. I pray that God will catapult you to a higher dimension in grace, in power, in knowledge, and in wisdom in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, Rema for living. I remain your brother, your friend, and your prophet. Till I come out, I will be away again on another episode of Rema for living. Make sure you subscribe, you like, you share and follow me on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, and Periscope. My name is Shama Chenaka. I love you all. And I say, God bless you for now. Shalom.